may find it difficult to determine your staffing needs as a small business owner or startup founder, having too few employees can prevent your business from growing and make it challenging to handle the workload. However, having too many employees can drive up your cost and strain your finances. An analysis and identification of staffing gaps and surpluses are part of the human resource planning. Sales and production data such as historical and predicted performance are used to estimate and forecast staffing needs. The human resource planning process involves staffing the organization with correct number of qualified employees at the right time to meet short and long-term business objectives. Using rule of thumb. A rule of thumb is used to calculate staffing needs based on the general organizational structure. If the organization structure calls for one operations manager to supervise five line supervisors, then short-term staffing means keeping the same number of supervisor when turnover occurs. The long-term staffing strategy is to plan to add five supervisors per managers. The rule of thumb calculation does not require in-depth analysis or exact calculation, but rather is based on maintaining the organizational structure using the Delphi technique. The Delphi technique is used to forecast human resources that utilize the input of a group of experts to analyze and plan to staff. It involves a group of senior managers, business consultants, or a combination of related business people familiar with the organization's staffing history responding to staffing questions. Their answers are compiled and reviewed by the group. Group members do not meet physically, but a facilitator describes questionnaires, compiles answers, and recirculates them to the panel members for further discussion and refinement of the forecasting needs. To prevent bias and groupthink, experts are kept anonymous to each other. This allows for information that it is objective and accurate as possible. Understanding the ratio methods. In a human resource forecasting, two ratios methods are used, staffing and productivity. Staffing ratio are used to predict hiring needs based on established organizational forms using the ratio of five secretaries per 20 senior managers. For example, can estimate recruiting for secretaries. Estimates of unit produced per employee are applied to hiring forecasts by, based on productivity ratios. The company that sells 2 million widgets per year and employs 25 production workers need to hire more production workers if sales are expected to increase or maintain 25 production workers to meet current sales. Analyze statistical regressions. In statistical regression, analysis relationship between historical data are compared to forecast staffing needs. Gross sales and staffing for the past five years are analyzed to determine whether they are adequate to support sales in the next five years. Prepare a staffing plan. Your first step should be to create a staffing plan. You can view it as a map that shows the exact number of roles, positions, and skills required within your organization. According to your budget and goals, you should cover your current and future staffing requirement in this document. As a small business staffing plan might include the following number and type of employees necessary to run the business efficiently. Existing human resources, planned staffing, workforce gaps, staffing options such as permanent versus temporary employees. Staffing plans can be created in a variety of ways. The plan should include your short long-term goals, the tasks needed to achieve those goals, and who be responsible for each job. Your employees may not have the necessary skills for, for upcoming projects. 
even if they are fully staffed. Therefore, it's vital to develop staffing projections for the next few months or years. Evaluate existing staffing resources and determine how to maximize them. Identify any gaps in staffing when hiring new employees by using staffing forecasting, by analyzing sales volume per employee over the past few years. A brick and mortar store, for instance, can determine future staffing requirement. Identify any gaps with the department with your company. Determine the staffing requirements. There are a number of things to be considered when creating a staffing plan. Consider your existing HR resources and business plans. Identify your employees, other skills and abilities by creating a skills inventory. Also review past performance reviews. Next, you will need to evaluate your options. You need to hire more employees. How can you improve an employee productivity or help them develop their skills? Are you looking to hire new employees in-house or on a project contract basis? Regular turnover and retirement turnover rates should be checked. Plan your staffing needs and budget accordingly. If you know several vital employees are retiring over the next two years, consider hiring interns to reduce costs. Your interns will have acquired the skills and experience needed to replace your current employees when they retire. Strategic staffing, a key aspect, your employees are your company's greatest assets. The right person can be found for the job and your hiring costs can be reduced with a strategic staffing plan. Furthermore, it can increase your business productivity and maintain harmony in your organization. Having too many or few employees can lead to workforce conflicts, diminish productivity and revenue loss. Having a staffing plan in place will give you a clearer picture of your company's current and future needs. Moreover, you will have a better chance at making better hiring decisions and reducing turnover. You can also use a staffing plan to determine whether you need full-time or part-time or temporary workers. You can update it as necessary. Taking a strategic approach of hiring also ensures compliance with equal employment opportunities. EO's regulation applied to companies with 15 employees or more. Organizational diversity goes beyond statutory requirements. Furthermore, it can enhance your company's reputation, increase employees' engagement, and expand your talent pool. Staffing needs, how do you calculate them? Number one, multiply the number of rooms per the number of hours per day multiplied by the number of days per week equal the total number of hours to be staffed per week. Number two, multiply the total weekly hours per the number of people in each room to arrive at the number of working hours per week. Number three, calculate basic FTE full-time employees by 40 hours worked week. What is the formula for staffing FTEs full-time employees? An employee with a 35 hours work week can calculate the full-time employee FTE by dividing the employee's scheduled hours by 35. An employee working 21 hours per week is 06 full-time equivalent when the full-time work week is 35 hours. The FTE, the full-time employee, is calculated by hours worked, not by employee. How do you calculate FTE hours per year? In the case of employee who works 40 hours per week, he or she is considered full-time. When full-time employee works 2,080 hours per year over 52 weeks, to calculate the full-time employee, the FTE, you can multiply your staff annual hours by 2,080. In a typical year, 17 employees will work 20,800 hours. Do you calculate the FTE over time? Calculating FTE 
one employee cannot be more than one FTE, means full-time employee. Over time, it's not considered. This will add together the average weekly hours worked per part-time employees who worked fewer than, 80, than 40 hours per week. Fewer than 30 hours per week on average. Calculate your FTE full-time employee by dividing 40 and routing it to the nearest tenth when you are doing staffing projections. Staffing plan. Five steps to success. Decide what your goals are. Your staffing plan must complement your business plan. Identify the factors affecting personal availability. Assess the organization's functional needs. Analyze your gaps. Plan your strategy. How many hours are in 2.5 full-time employees, FTEs? If, for example, an employee works 50 hours per week, one employee works 10 hours and one employee works 40 hours, a given project is a given hours per week that adds up to 100 total hours. Assuming a full-time employee works 40 hours per week, your FTE is about 2.5. What are the seven components of strategic staffing? Planning, recruitment, selection, decision-making, job offers, and retention systems are among them. Personal management involves the number, of the number quantity, and quality of people brought into, moved within, and retained by the organization. What are the hours in a staff month calculated? There are about 174 of work hours, the average numbers of hours available per month. The standard staff month is calculated as a percentage, as a percent of time an employee works relative to the standard staff month. The staff month are computed in a gross pay calculation job in payroll processing. The question to ask, are there staffing calculators that can tell you this? Calculators will not help you determine the most effective or efficient way to utilize your staff. You won't be able to be told whether changing to a different shift, length, or format is a good idea for your business. How do you calculate your staffing for your shift schedule? Determine what coverage level you can achieve with your current or future staff size. Determine the shift length. Examine the implication of different shifts length for staffing and covers. And the question to ask, is there any overtime? Using the calculators, you will be able to see whether it's possible to have schedule that does not include overtime. How is work time calculated using FTE full-time employee? Actual or projected work hours are converted into the number of full-time employees necessary to work those hours. FTE converts work hours directly into full-time employee into full-time employee staffing requirements. The issue is to calculate the FTE employee required hours for your organization. Conclusion, developing a staffing plan can be the first step toward workforce planning adoption in the organization. Leaders will become more comfortable with the interactive planning process for headcounts as more criteria, time frame, or scenarios may be added to help adding long-term strategic objectives. This is all for today's episode. Links to everything will be in the description below. If you like our content, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button. It will notify you about the new content that we share with you every week. This will help us produce great content for our professional audience. Let us know if there's something you would like us to discuss in future episodes. Please click the link in the show notes and you can address your questions directly to me. Thank you for listening and we'll see you in the next episode. Thank you.